Ladies and gentlemen, party people in the place to be, you are now in the midst of the realest. This is the Zero Conditions podcast brought to you by Pop Central and the incredible crew of Zero Conditions podcast. I go by the name Excel Drop, aka The Real. I love it when I meet people outside that listen to this podcast because they are like the only people that call me The Real. Anywhere I am and I see someone and they say The Real, I just know that they listen to this podcast. So shout out to you guys. Today is a special day. It's a it's a historic moment because <laughs> for the first time, two <laughs> of our co-hosts are not around. Motola Alake has music industry shit to attend to, and he told everybody like a responsible adult that he is that he can't make it. And we're like, okay, oh good. Melody say one thing, one thing. Let's move the time. We move the time, ladies and gentlemen. She's still not here. So when I drag her every week for being late. These are the issues, and this is why. Melody, we love you, but be more responsible. Do you understand? This is what we expect of Nigerian women. It's not enough to say you want this, you want that. Be responsible. <laughs> Stand up. Come up Come up to the, to the plate when it matters. Deliver as promised. Thank you. God bless you. Moving on from that, <laughs> Melody will drive me when, when she comes. That's if she even comes. Moving on from that, we have a very, very special guest in the building. This guest. When he's around you, you know, you don't talk anyhow. You don't talk anyhow. When he's in the place, all we do is we we talk, we talk, we talk, we talk good things. We talk responsible things. We talk sound. And we talk bags. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dolapwa Musa is in the building. How you Hi doing, guys. man? I do all right, man. I do all right. I'm good. Good to see you, man. Yeah. Dolapwa has, listen, guys. For those of you who don't know Dolapo, if you don't know Dolapo, <laughs> you are doing something wrong. Especially if you work like in the music space. Dolapo is the brain behind We Talk Sound. I don't know how to begin to explain what We Talk Sound is because <laughs> there was what We Talk Sound was and it has morphed into a lot now. Yeah. It has morphed into a lot. Like you guys are shooting content for brands, for creatives. You guys still do like strategy sessions for brands, for creatives. You yeah. do rollouts. You're wearing a We Talk Sound jersey right now. So yep, that means yep, fashion yep. is we're, coming. We're yeah. dropping soon, guys. Dropping. Nice to have you, man. Nice to have you. Man. You, you, you the truth is that the lab was supposed to have been on this pod <laughs> since we were terms and conditions. Yep. And they never kept, called me. This they, kept, no, no, no. It wasn't the plan. I tried to lobby. <laughs> I tried to lobby to get a slot. Nah, like, no, you, 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 you did not. You, You've not blown enough. Nah, let's, nah, let's nah, go and nah, up, your, nah. up your game. Oh my god, that that was not the case. That was not the case. <laughs> the truth is that we were always planning, and then something will happen, and something will happen. But God did it that when we'll be on TV. That you come, but then like the two of your hosts are not they here. Are not, so. They are not okay. They are not okay. But today, today is actually a very busy day. You know, there are some days in the industry that yep, just, yep, yep. There's so even like for me, I've been doing stuff all day. I have yeah. like three events. Later this night, now. I'm, yeah. I'm, we are going to we are going yeah, for we're one going together. To one. Yeah, so. yeah, so like it's, it's just one of those days that Motolani couldn't be around, and he said it, he couldn't be around. Melody, yeah. he, texted me, he texted yeah, me to be fair. He texted me. You see me, that yeah. men are responsible, my people. Women, <laughs> moving on, moving on. <laughs> How you doing, man? What's up, man? I'm good. Really happy to be here, actually. Yeah, uh, man. Because like it's been a long time coming. It is. It is. It yeah. has. Um, I'm trying to now remember. How long I've known you? Um, I would say 20, 2018-ish. 2018? No, not 2020. No, not 2018. 20, 20, 20, 2018. Yeah. 2018-ish. That's when I knew Tolani as well. Yeah. A lot has happened since then. A lot. Like, like personal a lot. stuff. Music stuff. Career stuff. You're a father now. Yeah. Like, I can't... I can't... <laughs> I can't do... <laughs> How you know somebody, you guys are chilling and next to the person <laughs> just goes off and marries. Life. And then has a child. Like, Life. What's going on? And then another thing that I noticed you've been doing a lot is that you've been traveling. Yeah. You've been I traveling have. a lot. Like, I'll just, yeah, I'll just see on Instagram. I'll see train. Yeah. Functional train. <laughs> you going to say no, be the one way in Lagos. <laughs> <laughs> Functional <laughs> rail system, metro. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But you've been traveling a lot. Yeah, you know, um, you've been experiencing life basically that's, that's, in different that's ways. Yeah. For you. I mean, that's good. I think we all are evolving as time is passing by, and different phases come with like different experiences. And I'm in a different phase of my life right now. 
I'm trying to soak it all in um, and enjoy, enjoy all the things that come with it and face the challenges that come with it as well. So yeah, it's all good. Nice. You know, one one of the things that so one of the things that I've, I I have associated you with is yeah. someone who has been very particular about how we project Nigerian music culture. Yeah. Not just Afrobeats. Yeah. Because Afrobeats is a big agenda. Yeah. But Afrobeats is not all there is to the Nigerian music space. Yeah. Um, so you you're someone that has been very and that has shown in like the, the, the people you've worked in, you've worked with. Yeah. Um you've worked with my very good boss, Reminis. Yeah, big that's my to, that's my egg boy. Big shout out to Reminis. Uh, yeah. new album coming soon, by the yeah, way. Yeah, soon. Um, you know, you've worked you worked on this. David o, David O's album. Yeah. Timeless. Yeah. You guys worked, worked on the, the DMW side of it. So basically helping to push the new artists, Logos and Logos Moravi. Logos and Moravi. Yeah. Moravi. So what has changed is, you know, when did we talk sound start, by the way? Let's even start from 20, 2016. You know what? First of all, let me tell you where we start from. So guys, <laughs> there is this invasion happening in the entertainment space. <laughs> it's an invasion. And we all need to come together and fight against it. You can't people. fight it. <laughs> people from Ibadan <laughs> are penetrating the music industry like crazy. Like, if you throw a stone, if you gather music industry people in one round, you throw a stone, it will hit like five people from Ibadan. Yeah. And they all know each other. Yep. That's even the craziest thing. They all know each other. They all went to the same primary school. They all went... How, is, how, did, how did that come about? Like, does this mean that Ibadan has like always been a place or a hub for the creative space and it's just beginning to mm. bloom now i can't claim to be able to tell the full history i can only tell from when i started to observe and be a part of things and as at then around 2016 when we're starting with talk sound you know the community yeah. then we're just literally i was in final year in uni a bunch of people in the community were people that had just graduated and others were like people who were still students, right? I don't think that there was anything major happening. It was like small pockets of collectives in especially University of Ibadan. Yeah. But it wasn't like a thing that the industry as a whole recognized or knew. I mean, before then there had been like some artists, you know, um Spiral. He was Spiral Freeze then. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. He was my senior in uni by a few years. So he had done stuff within the battle ecosystem. There were also like J there was like J Ru and Whiskey. You know, the songs is familiarity. familiarity. That was, so there were all That's those a jam. If you yeah. don't know that song. There were all those little moments in Ibadan, you know. But I don't think we had had Where any is Jeru? Me, no idea, bro. <laughs> no <laughs> idea, bro. Bro, that song was, was so big was in Ibadan the then. Like, it was... That was a jam. Like, I was he made in us Unilag. proud. I think I was in Unilag mm -hmm. when that song came out. Yeah. And it was such a huge song in school then. Yeah, so... There wasn't really anything major. But I think that from then... Somehow, I don't want to give We Talk Sound too much credit. But I know We Talk Sound takes part of the credits for the new resurgence or invasion whatever you want to call it of Ibadan people because most of the people that I find in different spaces now and I even think more of them are execs and back-end yeah, yeah, people yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. even really the artists it's not even like, like, yeah like they said music business if you gotta yeah. music business people just Ibadan many of them were like now. people that maybe when I was in final year they were like two years behind or three years behind they were on they were in We Talk Sound from the beginning and I just go somewhere to a missing and I'm like Yo, this you're guy. Here. You're here. So I think that we talked on sorts of help to aggregate some of the things that were going on in different spaces and bring it together. And then the fact that we have been able to sustain what we talked on was for this long. Even people that were not directly a part of the initial we talked on movement, they just heard of it and they knew that this was something that said from Ivado. And then they would like come on Twitter and see we talk sound is doing stuff with these big artists or we're doing something that's popping off in Lagos and then they're still in the body and they're like this, I know when these guys started I heard of them and they're here that means that there's actually a pipeline there's a way for me to also get to the so more or less, actual you inspired, industry you guys inspired other people oh absolutely we absolutely did and it's not, there's inspiration from far there's also like a ton of these people are actually we talk sound people like they yeah. were within the community 
when the community started. And it's not just music, it's also like if we factor in people like Veda. Shout out Veda. People like Oli Ekun. Yeah. Do you know Oli Ekun used to be a rapper? I had no idea. We have songs together. There's this cipher that we did in Agba. When I was in final year, it was called Gravity Bars Cipher. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's another thing. You rap. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's the name of that project you and you and Yeah, Vida we had Lagos dropped. in July, Lagos in December. We Lagos in, two, yeah. Two projects, yeah. Ah. Something, oh my God, there's a particular song and there's yeah. a particular bar. Lucky Water Brown Lecky like Guinness. Water, like, Lucky Water Brown like Bro, Guinness. Bro, like, I randomly would open my Twitter these days and people would be quoting, like, I would just open my Twitter randomly and someone would quote it and tag me. I'm like, yo, yeah. that's actually something that I yeah. came up with and like has become a thing for some people. So yeah, all of us used to be artists. Like, we all started this thing because we saw these collectives in the US, like Pro Era. I was a huge fan of Pro Era and Odd Future. Just how they were just a bunch of like late teens and they were all creatives. They had artists, they had designers, they had just, it was just a pool of people that had different pieces of talent that they brought together. And it was all those movements where you can't really tell what it is. Like it's not a label, it's not a, an official collective, yeah. it's not what. So for like the first few years of we talked about, people used to ask like, what exactly are you guys? Like, I don't get it. I know you guys are doing something cool, something fun, but I'm not sure what you guys are. And even we didn't really know. We just knew that we were doing stuff that made sense to us and we're having fun. And obviously as time passed, you learn a lot, experience a lot, and you now are able to start to structure things. And you're like, okay, we built this, this, this. We have these resources. We know these people. How can we then... I guess transform it into like a business that mm. can scale. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, there's something that caught my attention while you were speaking when you were talking okay. about like how. So you are you you wear a rapper because you don't rap anymore. I mean, I intend to still rap. That's not like that's not something I'm killing, by the way. Like that's something I'm taking a pause on. So you have you have decided to consciously like say, okay, I will do this and I will come back and I'll do this. Yeah, and I'll come back. like. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in my hustling phase right now, you know, and I've been for a few years. I'm like actively building business. So it's like how I see it is I started off as a creative, mm -hmm. like a core creative. Even before I was actively rapping, I was writing. Like I had, um, like I used to run a blog in UI. Yeah. I, like I won poet of the year in uni, like in final year in University of Ibano. Like that's how much I was into like literature, poetry and writing and stuff. And... Then it became music. Like, I liked music, but I wasn't actively, like, recording. Then it became music. And then I had to get into the industry. And I realized that, okay, let me put myself on the back end a bit and push my friends or other people I knew. Because obviously, amongst all of us, was like, I was the person that, sort of the strategic person. So I was like, okay, let me just focus on, like, promoting Veda. Like, all these are guys that were making music. And somehow that decision became like a thing where I now became an exec. I found myself being an exec. You like I sort of stumbled into it. Exactly. I stumbled into it. It wasn't like I was planning to be. And I got to a point where I had to tell myself, okay, now I've realized what has happened. Is I don't even have the time or the or the mental energy to sit down and like write like stuff anymore or like just do artsy stuff anymore. And I'm like, I acknowledge what is going on, but it's needed for me to get to where I need to get to. So let me put my energy into morphing into becoming a business executive and understanding how business works and also developing the personality type that's needed to be a successful businessman. Because I think that that's something that's sort of understated. Mm. Like the, I had to change even who some parts of who I am as a person to be able to function as a CEO because it's like in the beginning even though we're doing cool stuff I didn't know how to talk about money like I couldn't it was like be on a call and be like oh this is how much you want to charge I'd be like mm, okay we'll do it for free like I was so we'll do it for free because I was avoiding the conversation about money and I do remember this stage yeah there are many things people will be like oh if we talk sound okay can you do this I'll be like okay don't worry we'll do it no problem and I had to consciously like start to develop that muscle like yo guy if you're really trying to take this thing to another level it could be a cool fun thing you're doing that's one option if you're trying to take it to another level you have to develop certain muscles that are not necessarily natural to you yeah to be able to make the decisions you know hire people um lead a team 
be able to give feedback, criticize stuff. Like, you don't have to be like a nice, soft person all the time. Like, I'm naturally like very soft. That, but like, you have to develop certain things that, certain traits that will help you lead better. So I had to take some years of like going through the fire to become like a good, well-rounded person that has that can have both sides both and exhibit sides of them. being a creative and, and being an exec. Now I feel like yeah, I'm getting close to the point where we reach that sustainability where I'm now able to take a back seat a little bit and now go back into my the things it's I actually gone. love, which is like you know music. Even listening to music is like a chore. Like. Music, what music, I listen music, like my music like the actual music that I listen to is like is hip hop like it's like Joey Badass Earl Sweatshirt like yeah. that's my shit but these days I don't even have like I just find myself playing the popular shit like if I if there's one shit I have song I like I'd rather listen to it hundred times on it's repeat also, it's also an age thing though than listen to like an Earl Sweatshirt album like Earl Sweatshirt dropped his new album and I've not even played it yet so but I know that it's an age thing but I also know that it's a mental bandwidth thing like there's yeah. points where you're just yeah, doing so much. much that you can't you're yeah, just listening to the thing that'll give you instant gratification yeah so I want to also like slowly get back into that creative space like music discovering. writing making music discovering while I'm an exec so I like tech of SDC for instance like that's someone that I'm like hmm I like what this guy has yeah, been able to do with the balancing like balance. thing. Yeah, so yeah, I'll still definitely get back to making music. I, I have another question for you. But we must address the fact that Melody <laughs> just walked in into the studio. Melody, this podcast comes out, video out on YouTube on Monday <laughs> and um, streaming um, audio on streaming platforms also on Monday where you can catch what was said earlier about you uh, to, the, to the audience. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I wasn't, I didn't say anything. What did you say? He said I, I, everything. I said, I said, I said, I said that you can catch it on Monday. Okay, I will catch it on Monday anyway. So but yeah, that part where they're like, what, whatever. Channel. I should subscribe to our YouTube yes, channel. Yes, subscribe to I catch it on Monday. But yeah, I really apologize. Like, I was struggling and trying to get here on time. But yeah. Thank you for coming still. Uh, I mean, thank, you, I mean, thank you for coming. But anyways, that conversation that you were having where you said the yeah. uh, struggle to listen to music, yeah. I feel like it's not spoken about enough because I do not understand it. Yeah. As a person, like I feel like as a person naturally, yeah. my and like when I started out on radio, like my entire yeah. MO was looking for, you know, emerging artists. I literally had a whole vlog that was dedicated to upcoming yeah. <laughs> melodies, 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 no. yeah. Yeah. melodies, 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 melodies. Yes, no, that was like every big five people. Big five artists every week. I was always so excited to go on SoundCloud, you know, find the new guys that are yeah. popping. These days. Yes. It's like what the, what's the and that was you are playing, okay. So that energy of like going to find yeah. new artists or like just intentionally being the one to search yeah. is not long, like it's not there anymore. And there are so many guys now that are doing really good music. And I, I feel like back it's even easier now for underground guys, yeah, for emerging guys to be found. You know, back in the day, it used to feel like a whole lot. Where yeah. people like maybe me and other people like yeah. would be spotlighting a, and be looking for. An angle. But now, before you even spotlight, they've even, they've, they're there. They're okay. Yeah. I have an angle to that conversation. There's yeah. something that I think. think. Um, I think that the apart from us as individuals, this thing happening to us as individuals who work in the music space, mm. yeah. I think that in general, Niger- Nigeria and Nigerian music culture is no longer in the space where we're keen on discovering and like listening to music from emerging artists i think that hmm. commercialization has made everyone not face the mainstream there was a time when no the, hear me out there was a time when 2016 17 18 it used to be a thing of pride yeah. To listen yes. to people that Do you understand? And Biggie wants to even tell the next yeah. person, like, I'm guy. Telling, I, like, this is also, it's not this a, was also the same era as the Alter era. Yes, like, it used to be a thing of pride. Like, like you're the one, find yes. I'm telling you people. Share, people like, oh, yes. who is the new guy? Send yes, even on social that. media, and I had the now, conversation. We all just want to listen to freaking Ashake, Rema. Shea like, the, en- the enthusiasm from even the regular music listeners is not there again. I think, I think. Are you he, sure? I, he, he has a point. But I think it's not... This thing happened. It's real. What you yeah, describe is yeah. real. But it's not all organic. What you know, you like, I feel like that commercialization, commercialization yeah. happened with the fact that Af- like Afrobeats or 
Afrobeats became an agenda. Yeah. And money started coming, coming for Afrobeats Afro and nothing else. Yeah. So the, the major labels started coming. And for and it to come for Afrobeats, obviously it has to start from the bigger guys. From the bigger so the guys. money started focusing from biggest to trickling down. To small. And now there's only a few of that money that like will get right to right now, like, every, emerging, people emerging from guys. like A list to C list have deals. Like if you're a new distributor coming yeah. in or you're a new label coming yeah. in, it could be a bit tough for you to find um, artists that are available. Yeah. Per se. Do you understand? Yeah. Because like A list, C list artists have deals. They all have deals. Because money has come in. And what's happening, what's not happened with that is that, yeah. uh, back to what we were saying was that money came in and the money that came in came for Afrobeats. You know, when people used to do all this, uh, when people do all this, um, oh, Nigerians don't support hip hop. This is. I used to always be my, my mind was uh, I used to be divided about it because yeah. I was like maybe Nigerians are not supporting hip hop for different maybe it's what people are you know there were different excuses at the time the music was not local enough the rappers were rapping in yeah. English and it, and then and my piano happened an essay South Africa that we were all using to as a yardstick, yardstick for yeah. Nigerian rappers and my piano came and shut down essay hip hop Yep. Shut it down. Like, like control delete. Shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, when I say shut it down, of course I'm, I'm exaggerating. It's not like yeah, it's not yeah, dropping yeah, or whatever. Yeah. But, but my piano took over. Yeah. yeah. Like, do you understand? And it and the rappers were like, like this. Da da. Like okay. Um, um. You know, everybody was like confused, and I was like, oh shit, that's the same thing that happened here. And my piano picked off in. SA yeah. and all the majors mm-hmm. and the big distros over there pumped money into a, a man piano. So they pump money for it on the radio. They pump money for it on the TV. It's literally what happened here with Afrobeats. The, the major labels came here. The distros came here. They pump money for Afrobeats yep. on, on the talents, on the radio, on TV and it's all over the place and the rest cannot yeah, compete. Yeah, and it's a share of mind thing. Like there's only the so much... The rest cannot compete. There's only so much you can, as a listener, you can manage at the same time. Yeah. If like all the big guys are competing and they're, and the frequency of re- music releases is another thing. It's like... Yeah, it There was a time help. when you would, you would get an album, one one album in three years from your big artist and then you drop fine. singles. Now it's like the Ashakia dropped another album. So and he has to drop another last year, one. Next all, I, year. all I heard through last year, if I, all I heard through last year was Ashakia's album, because like I'm a, I like Ashakia's music and I'm a casual music listener. Now he has given me another one to listen to all through the year again to next year. And then there's also Olam. There's like everybody's dropping. And the way albums but, but, work but, is but that. Wait, but in response to you saying talking about like the majors mm. bringing in money and focusing on. I yeah. don't think that connects to the emerging guys because even the, when the majors bring money for Afrobeat, yeah, it's like the emerging guys are also doing Afrobeat now. No, it connects. Yeah. It connects. To, it connects to them. Wait, you think, now. wait, let wait, me, let me, let me. It connects let to me them, and I'll tell you why it connects to them Jesus, because now, as sad, as sad. no, well, let me, <laughs> let me even get, don't start. You came late. You don't have right to talk to. <laughs> it connects to them because the emerging artists themselves are now influenced. So they must do Afrobeats. CK didn't start off with Afrobeats. But he's. If you remember CK, well, he's, CK. he's an Afro emo he's not, Afro beat. He's not doing so. So CK's music is know. is like he's found R&B, a niche. He has found Afro a beat. But he has found if, a you niche to, if you listen to CK's first first EP, the one that yeah. he featured, um, what's her name? Bella Lubo. That yeah. EP doesn't count. No, wait now. No. Uh, is who the fuck is CK? Who the fuck is no no? Is it who the fuck is CK now? That's the one that has Bella Lubo. I don't I don't know. I think the only project I know of. Which CK, one to be his first is he was he CK. has always been doing like emotional love kind of music yes. always even at the beginning see Johnny Drill don't they knock Bedou <laughs> understand what I'm saying <laughs> Johnny Drill don't they knock Bedou because it is what the market is it's saying demanding for. and the labels are spending money they must make it back do you understand it's just that with Maven Maven are trying to find a way to make sure that the Johnny Drill Bedou is not far from, from that his original foxy. thing, yeah. It's not very far. It's not very far. But it's, uh-huh. it's not like you see, you see Johnny just start say Ibadi. Uh, no, he won't do that. It doesn't make sense. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I think that the more interesting angle of this is even the is the consumer behavior. The industry part is pretty straightforward. So no, but it's like but what has changed no. consumer behavior for, for the consumer behavior one, yeah. right? I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a thing that the consumers are no longer like paying attention to those guys because at the end of the day. A lot of the things that these consumers take, or the lot of things that these consumers um, like taking, we are the ones who give them. So, if the people who are the 
the front, the yeah. people who are supposed to be championing these conversations are literally not even interested, are literally like brain drained and they are not putting in that effort to start searching for those songs and putting that at the forefront. The consumers won't mm, necessarily I, I agree. go I, and I look see what you're brain saying. Drained. I, no. no, brain drained. No, like tired, like drained. exhausted. What are you yes. exhausted. What are you talking about? Major go carry back. No, him. you're not listening. No. Okay, Who it's money. Again. Wait, wait. I agree with what no, you're saying. I agree you don't understand what I'm saying. saying. Yeah, sorry, Who do you think I'm speaking about for the brain drain? I'm talking about him. I think it's like platforms. I'm talking about him. I'm talking like about me. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about people and who... People that my nigga is doing roll out for David and exactly. Reminisci. That's, that's why, why it's his money. Exactly. So wait, that's I hear you money. wait now. So I hear that money conversation. Wait. Yeah. Then I'm also saying that aside from the money... So he, if he's saying... Aside from the money conversation, yeah. he's also talking about how me another personally, reason. I'm personally, not, yeah, he's not looking you, for I the music. I am not looking for the music. I'm no, but that's why. Am I doing that for David? Um, melody, I hear you. So I'm just saying, the people, wait now. You know how they always say that the people, what's that cover? I can't remember now, like the tastemakers, not yeah. like tastemakers, the people who like bring the music to the forefront. Yeah. You know, the stations, the yeah. social media people yeah. that are interested, I used to do yeah. all that work. I'm no longer doing the work. So the consumers come on Twitter and whatever some people are talking about, and they, they go and check, check They it. go to the charts and they just listen to what. And they go and check Excel's page. They tell you things they But money. back in the day, we used to do all that work of going to look for the yeah, artists. Where now, it ties to money is that, and I was saying this earlier today. We had this um, no music day, Niger. Yeah. Thing. I actually gave a shout out to you. I said you're one of the first people to play our music. Yeah. So, I think where money comes in is that when we, if I use us as a case study, when we started, yeah, yeah. it was all about, we're doing it because we like music, right? Yeah. Yes, for the love, and we were younger. So didn't we bills. didn't have that many responsibilities. <laughs> now, and also the industry wasn't bills. as... The industry simply wasn't as profitable from a financial point of view then. Like, it's then. not like now where money is hanging everywhere. And same for many other platforms. When we started, a bunch of platforms started after us, influenced by what we were doing. Yeah. All of us were like... The, okay. the hot thing was like, who is the first plug to... The, uh, like people used to come to us a lot for because they knew that we had so many artists within our community yes, so much talent yes. it was talent based like it was about yes, talent it was talent based then things got we never we didn't even have a rate card I remember that for like the first maybe four years of We Dog Sound are you serious we did not have a rate people would say so how like so send your rate card once person like what's rate card in fact I had this ideology then I was like that rate card means that we're selling our like oh my we're, god we, we're monetizing what we should be like it was just Why against my ideology everybody else had rates car like Ex- i was like Ex- but at some point it, became, it just did not make sense anymore Ex- to operate on that <laughs> model of Let like <laughs> it didn't make sense anymore to operate Ex- on that model of like oh let's Free. put on songs we yes, like alone. Yes. then people started to buy slots it now became more around oh we want to do pl- friday playlist obviously some songs are going to make it but some other songs are like oh i want to pay you guys to be on your playlist it became less about the songs Dolakpo and his team likes hmm. that he thinks are dope are the ones that make it on the place. It became more around who is rolling out this week and this is our race card. So if you pay, then you're going to... And that's what everybody does. And you can't blame anyone because <laughs> the industry is in a phase where it is scaling Profitable. up and it is about commer- the commercial value now. Yeah. And less about the artistic value. Now, what people like us are doing and should do more of is so still find, find people within guys. our teams because we Dedicated. as individuals don't have that bandwidth to do that anymore. Yeah. Ha- find young people within our teams who are still passionate about what is coming and, up yes. in the underground and then empower them to now become the new us. Yes. That is where people miss it because I feel like a lot of people are not doing a lot of that. It's like once you elevate to that next level yeah. nobody you cares just, about more, I don't care about imagine unless yeah. the guy already has numbers and is doing well okay let me now see how I can sign him or join his team. So you have to empower the like twenty one year olds, people in Unilag that know the guys that are popping there, and give them a platform as well, or give them space on your platform. This thing you have, then, this place you have gone. Eh, I have a lot to say. <laughs> yeah. But let me just announce that we are going on a break. Okay. And we'll be back shortly. In case you miss anything, we talk about the full podcast. The full episode will be out on Monday on YouTube and on streaming platforms. Check it out. We'll be back soon. But the audio is still going on. Yeah, we're yeah. still talking. Yeah. Now, this thing you said, I 110% align with you on the fact that... So, me, oh, me, I still, I still try to look for new people, new creatives. Yeah. I'm, always, I'm always doing that because I have become very disappointed with New Music Friday. <laughs> 
2016, 2017, yeah. New Music Friday with a run go down, with a run go check, waiting to happen. You, know, you go hear some some slappers, some bangers. Yeah. I remember when at least you go go Friday, go to exclusives or not just okay, sit down, download happily. Yeah, one or two nah, bangers. Music, I feel like music fell off. <laughs> Did music fall off or are we just too late <laughs> to do the no, work? No, it's two things. It's two things. One, there's still great, there's still a lot of un- unknown great music yeah. out there. There's yeah. still a lot of unknown great music out there. So that's one. So music technically did not fall off. It didn't really fall off. Two, the second problem, the opposing uh, argument is that the barrier for entry in music is so low no. right now that niggas that are not as talented can come in. Have albums yeah, and if and they have, out and there. if they have resources, they're and gonna be they, ahead of. You understand? Whoever. So hmm. there are a lot of people, and it's it, the, the music space is such an incredible space because you could be a singer and even know how to sing well, and you will never find fulfillment as a singer. You will find it more as an exec. Hmm, yeah, it's a thing. And yeah. sometimes I I know certain people who are musicians, and I look at them, I'm like, you would be a great A and R. You would be a great A and R, but for some reasons. I don't know. You can't. Do- and then I see some people that I see that can even be both. That can be the musician. Yeah. And be and be the uh, one, of, one, one of those is um, Remy Baggins. Yeah. Remy Baggins easily is a musician. Yeah. And he's also going to be a great yeah. Now I know he's not ready for it now because he's still building his own music career. But in the future, yeah. you guys go and hold Remy Baggins neck to be an air and work with creators. Because that man has a lot of talent he must put out. He was put out from his body. Now, in terms of like working with new, not new, younger music enthusiasts, another thing that has happened is that the music ecosystem in Nigeria is cool. It's po- like the music business itself, even, mm. is becoming pop culture. Yeah, it is. Not just the music and the Absolutely. musicians. So the music you. business space in itself. It's becoming pop culture. Yeah. It because it became a thing everybody wanted to be an A&R, yeah, nah, you know? The A&R joke <laughs> ran brother. for a couple he of ran. years. It's still running. It's still running, bro. It's, still no, running. it's not as bad as it used to yeah, be. Yeah, it's not as bad. Oh, okay. The A&R joke is still running. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. If you missed any of what we talked about, please catch it on Monday when the full audio and video drops on YouTube. Now, because the music business space itself has become this cool thing, everybody sees it online, Young people see Asa at Wireless. You see Bezo at here. You see David Avante. You see niggas sharp moving and doing things. You want yeah. to be Traveling. dapper. You want, do you understand? I feel like, and it's just the nature of the business. I don't think it's intentional. It's the nature of the of the music business and to come up as is- glory, as, as this exotic, sweet sailing, smooth, glorious thing. Yeah. When it is actually the a ghetto. Lot of work. And it is a lot of work. And a lot of pain. Yes, yes. And a lot of tears. Absolutely. Niggas have spent money and have not seen it back yep. in years. And they keep pushing. And they keep finding another artist and working with. And finding another one and working with. Yeah. And finding another one <laughs> and working with. Like, if you sit down with a lot of these people that you look up to, they, they didn't just stumble into the, the success. They went through a lot of hardship. I feel like we've not done a good job of making that known. And a lot of times when I have conversations with the younger music business enthusiasts and the younger music business professionals even now, yeah, the, the conversation with them is, oh, I'm all about my bag, the bag. I get it, you know. It's, it's, even, it's, a, it's a pop culture speak. Everybody wants to get the, the bag, bag, the bag. Yeah. But life is in process. Life is in stages. Life yeah. is in phases. Like, you cannot jump from being stage two to the big bag. But some people actually do. They do and, they, and they don't last. Do they all go through and the they processes? Don't last. Not and they every, don't last. That's, so, and they don't last. So you, you see back in Show the day... Show me one person and they don't last. Show me one. <laughs> you see back in the day, we used to have conversations where we say things like, oh, so as an artist, you have to go through this this process yeah. where, you know, you you go through discovery stage where we used to give props to, you know, record labels like their Mavens that would do like artist mm-hmm. development yeah. for like three, four years. Some artists are just blowing up on social media. They're not and going they through that last. artist development. And they well, don't, don't last. I don't know what's last. I don't know what's last. They don't last. Are you sure? What's today's lasting? Land, music landscape. Because there are artists who go through artist development and go through L the entire person and they still don't blow. Melody. I'm not even talking about... 
you took it to artists. I'm talking about music exactly. business yeah. professionals. Okay, so cool. even for artists, it's even different. Uh-huh. For music professionals, right? You have to be really grounded and know what you. And but learn. you can't blame people who came. I don't blame them. Who came in the time when money is money the is not their fault. Yes, and not, not the love like, of the industry. Yeah, yeah. Like, a lot for the music. And there's, like and there's tech, so many. It's like tech, bro. Like everybody's trying to. Why? Why is everyone trying to be a dev or a UX designer or whatever? It's because you've seen tech how goes. much tech guys earn or how much Google the, the, pays or how much whatever. The conversation there that was a time when it wasn't that cool or pretty, yeah. and some people were doing like I can't it's the same them. thing. And guess what? Even the conversation around tech, everybody wants to be like tech bro. And it is money tech, driven. It's, it's like 2020 in 2023 <laughs> now, right? If you go on social media, the way people were going crazy and talking about like tech, I want you to be like a tech bro and tech sis. Yeah. Two years ago, it's not the same thing now. Yeah. You don't slow the down the slow. conversation has reduced. Yeah, because like the market is, is saturated. Is not, the, no, it's not even just saturated. The market for tech this year hasn't been good. Layoffs yeah, everywhere. Been layoffs everywhere. So obviously, it's not, it's for, not even, as even fire. For the, VCs even, aren't really investing as well yeah. as much now. And even for the music exec, so, and even that co- having, having that conversation around the music execs and saying that, oh, some people just want to be about the money. There are so many music execs that have put in like, their love, put in their blood, put in everything into artists, and they didn't get anything back. Yeah. And, and those that, young ones that are coming in now, that's why you say you don't. Those ones to no. now sit down with those ones. Yeah, don't don't stress for anybody, yo. No, don't do this for anybody, yo. They'll throw you out of the this thing. thing. So people life, go in and eh, let me get my bag. In life, eh, it's very important to know. How do I say this? Your place in the ecosystem. Mm. If you are a pioneer of a movement, you will suffer. <laughs> yeah. If you pioneer a movement, for sure, you will suffer. <laughs> I can't you say that. If you pioneer a movement. It's because of lack of education yeah. or lack of like uh, we too we did not document a lot of our history well so shout out to the people trying to do that now no. yeah. that we think that of course and this is not to take away from what the Bonners the Davido the Whiskeys are doing now they are mm. doing incredible stuff but King Sonia Ade and people and other people were shutting down foreign tours years ago yep. before we were born before we, some of us were people born people don't talk about it do you understand so it's like but those people too, they paved, they paved the way. And they, even for them, there are people that paved the way for them that we don't even know about. Yep. And those people too go down so far. Yep. Do you understand? Like, yeah. And those people even had like managers, road managers, you know, execs and the all of this. You see, you see the way that now is, that, that, is that, that is new now. I invest yeah. new. It's nothing it's new. Nothing it's not new. new. And also the way we are able to have the conversations now and say maybe in the next 10, 15 years, the, um, the music execs that we have now that are at the front of these conversations that are using social media that are popular will not be erased the way them those ones managers were yeah. erased because we don't I even mean, know can't, can't. we don't even know some of them just because the internet media exists alone. So, so do you understand social yeah. media alone bro I mean, we don't even know some of them people did like really hard work so much work that a nobody's talking about Instagram post about music or a musician or a music exec it's literally a historical document yep. if you look it's at equivalent it like to that. something it's equivalent some to a historical somewhere. document because, like, yep. Yeah, documentation, yeah. Yeah, so like, so I get that, but it just worries me because now mm-hmm. what 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 ends up happening is the detriment of the music itself. Itself, yeah. When people don't ask. care about pop culture, it reflects in the art. What, I think that's a phase. I think it's gonna circle back. I no, think, I think it's happening. I think it's even happening. Yeah, already. yeah. So what you mean? Say that again. When people don't care about art or about pop culture, when they don't genuinely love it, yeah. When they don't genuinely love pop culture or love or music love the or love the art, okay, it reflects in the art they work on, or the quality of what is showing yeah, out. Yeah, it reflects in the quality of the art yeah. they work on, on how they do it, on how they roll and it how out. much they're willing to yes, like and... push to just get like I, like if we look back at even like we talked on and the things that like we actually did work, like it was not. I remember it was no. not. Pre- it was like literal. It was like I remember what when you say going from zero. To something like actual zero, like I remember, no, no I background, that, no funding, no like no knowledge, just nothing. Community. It was just people that were, just e- were not even in Lagos. Like, maybe if we even were in Unilag, would have been a bit more exposed to the industry. Yeah. When Ibadan, so it's not even like we Come saw on, anything in terms that was of remotely like, like Unilag what we influencing tried to do. Um, the industry music space. Yeah. Unilag fell off or. Really? Uh, yeah, it did. I remember there was a yeah. time where I, everything was in the and whatnot were all coming out from Unilag. Everything, like, music execs, everything. But now, everything. like, first of all, artists, OAU. I don't know what happened with OAU, but OAU yeah. has done a madness. They yeah. have. With bringing out crazy talents. Um, I think that I remember, like, one of, I and I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, one of the yeah. peak periods for We Talk Song where you guys yeah. really, like, Show that power of community and strength yeah. was was COVID. 
Yeah, absolutely. Clubhouse, bro. Like, Clubhouse. Clubhouse really was we a game talk changer ha- for we us. We talked down hey! Clubhouse room. Bro. Was the shit. It was the shit. <laughs> Many fights. <laughs> Bro. Many arguments. Nah, man, that was life. Many bands. It, it, it was fire. Nah, it was like fire. Like we would be there till two a.m. Two a.m. Five a.m. Nah, nah, that was that was such a. And sweet you know era. the thing again, it's th- the way things connect to other things and inspire other things and mm-hmm. make things happen. There are people who what I think one key thing that that clubhouse room did was that it brought together people. Like minds in the diaspora, yeah. Uh-huh. Us here. yeah the people in the diaspora that were doing their thing, like you know, I have a bunch of people that are my friends now. Yeah, that were from club. That were yeah, that are like they, they were doing their thing, like yeah. like Emmanuel Palm Wine Puppy. Yeah. Yep. Um, Janine, Do you remember Janine? Yeah, I remember right. Janine. Janine. Even Grace, see them. That's how we yeah. all met. We all connected I to yeah, Grace, actually Daisy May. Daisy. It was all through with uh, that club Toby room. Toby and KP, room. Belema. Ah, nah, that That's how, time. so Shout it was like, these guys, were doing, these guys were doing cool stuff abroad and they were looking at the scene at home and, but there was no direct connection. Like, connection. connection. Yeah. And, yeah. You just, and you know what happens when you talk, you're in the same room with someone every night for like months. You become, you've never friends. seen the person before, you know anything about the person's life, but it feels like, friends. Yeah. and then like, they would come to Nigeria, would link up. When I went to London last year, like I saw L, I saw Toby, like, and just those things, I now see people that are met from those rooms working together. Yeah. People getting jobs off of like. Yes, the link like, ups. The link ups are the enter crazy. relationships. Relationships. Even. Palm Wine Puppy's Twitter space is, ba- is probably the most important music, Twitter, Twitter space, space on, on music right that's consistent right, right now. now. And it started from right our, our clubhouse, from we right talked sounds clubhouse before it broke out into yeah. its own thing. So. That's how I see the role that we talk on plays. Outside of us being a company and us trying to make money, it's that even the movement that is happening in Nigerian music today, we talk on has contributed a chunk to it. In if you start weaving all the threads of certain things that were done, compilation albums. When we started doing LOFN, it wasn't that because we saw someone else do that, but after then, a bunch of people have done. Even the way we present on like our media formats. When we started doing it, that's not how people were doing it. Yeah. Platforms that came after. And it, what we saw was that what took us four years to achieve. People are doing it in this short time. D- d- came and did it in one, two years. Yeah. Because like 49 Street literally came. Um, TXC Mark, Upper End, all these guys came. Because like we had to le- do all the like, we didn't even know how to do it. We, did, we tried Ibadran, different eh? things. Who? It's Fulu Ibadan. Yeah, Fulu Ibadan. I went to the same, hi- same Mark, high school. Yeah, what's his name? Koti is Ibadan. I went to the same high school. I say it's an invasion. Like, people are invading the industry. We so gotta I, put a I, I think that the he said we gotta put it stop. <laughs> They're invading. No, no, you can't stop it. Yeah, no, she's just joking. You can't stop it. Like, no, but well. you know, you know, back in the day, you really used to be Unilag. But now, yeah, yeah. As, as someone who like started this and I've seen all the other guys coming after and taking them a shorter time, do you make yeah. it, does it make you feel a type of way? No, it doesn't. Because if anything, it should make you happy. It makes me yeah. like, after, like when all these guys started. We actually like when Forty Nine Street started, for instance. Like we did a lot of stuff with them. Yeah. To launch, to serve I as like a launch pad for them for to the, come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When turntable started, same thing. Like for me, it's always about the connectivity. Like because I feel like if you help people create a better ecosystem, you know what I just back on you, you know what you complained about? No, what? not complained. But what you shared about like yeah. how you started and you don't know how to have like those money, money conversations. conversations yeah. I literally remember Folu having the same problem. Yeah. I literally remember Folu having the same problem. And I remember... It, it doesn't come native to you if you're Yeah, and I remember I, about we, we sat down somewhere. Uh, we sat down somewhere to have lunch. I think it was CCX. And I and I wanted him to run a campaign. And I think they had not been paid before for a campaign. Like, damn. they just do it for friends. Literally, you know. Yeah. And he was like... Um, I was like, my nigga, they take money. Like, <laughs> shout, shout out Folu now like, shout the thing out Folu. Is, and now I Folu has like, grown into ah, Folu is a so, ah, monster Folu, in the music business Folu is a beast he's a beast now <laughs> in the, it's good to see people I think grow, that it's, man. it's also it's like good. just in the wiring of creatives in like I was going to yeah. say that it's not no, just about you guys even me I used to yeah. struggle a lot in there's a wiring it feels like you're selling your soul once yep. money is involved Don't do it. but I think the creatives are coming I now I have melody stories but I think the creatives are coming now I really 
really strong no, no, with it. I feel like the creatives that are coming now will not feel the same way, by the way. Eh? No, they won't. The creatives that are coming now, I've already seen more. They the very bag. advanced. They the are bag. coming for the, the money. Bag. When we were coming up, and money, it in felt the like the arts was a was, was the know, most important thing. Like, also long thing, a defining thing that you, you can't mix it with money. But how, money do, we, how do we now? Things. How do we teach? I have, want upcoming music business professionals to yeah. be paid. I want them to have They are money. getting paid. No, I, I I don't want to sound like I'm anti that because yeah. I feel like someone oh. may hear me and think I'm anti yeah. that. Okay, I'm not anti I, think that. I, know I want, want them to, to get paid. Yeah. But there's but there's also a thing of like sometimes for your own self, for you yeah. to grow, yeah. you may find yourself in situations where you may not get paid and you know that it sounds like when they say exposure what I'm saying now wants to sound like uh, oh, we'll don't pay you. I know the we'll pay you the well, but don't now. pay your well, It's a real thing <laughs> as a professional, right? Yeah. That sometimes yeah. you, that's work for you free. not even work for free. You might it's like you have to you, delay gratification. You have to delay really, gratification. Like whether it's free, whether it's not free, whether, whether it's, it's free, more money. Like situation. you have to know that I'm doing this thing now for something that may be better in the future. And guess what? That's, you being able to do that yeah. is you gaining experience. And people, I know that yeah, people are anti. That. A lot of people will still not <laughs> yeah. understand what I'm saying. Yeah. You I have to get you. to where I am now to get it. But but, but experience cannot be bought. Yeah. Yes, absolutely agree. Experience, eh, cannot be bought. I but I also, also think that it's also important for us to when we're having the conversation and you mm. know speaking on the delayed gratification and yeah. you know sometimes you have to learn that when you're starting out somewhere. You might not necessarily have to put money at the front of it. That a lot of times people take advantage of it, yes. especially in a in a system and as vicious as this music industry where it feels like everybody's yes. out to take I'm advantage. Going to tell you. Wait Absolutely now, Absolutely true. <laughs> where it feels like in this music industry, everybody's out to take advantage of a young person yeah. or someone that they feel like is not knowledgeable enough or is just starting out. It's okay for us to tell them that delayed gratification, no? but, but don't let's let not forget that a lot you. of times people are people yeah. who have been ahead of you are not necessarily looking out for you. And, not, and they do not care if you've not made money. So while we're telling them that, it's also important to tell them that you also look out for your own self because the economy is bad. Yeah. At the time when we started, when you started things like four, bad, four or five years ago, things fair. were in this bad. Yeah. Now things are so bad. People really just want, need to survive. People just really need to survive and, and just buy food. eat. Yeah. So delayed gratification, does that mean you should die? Nigeria has always been bad. And now let me, let, me, <laughs> let me answer, let me speak to what you're saying. Yeah. You, don't know what you're, you don't know what you're saying. Yeah. You don't know, there was a time there was a time where you used to trek from Coco Michael. There was a time that Coco this State. music business thing made me and my father f- fight, and my father kicked me out of the house. Yeah, and I was sleeping in Foza and Ire's office. That's crazy. Before I now started sleeping with my, I now started staying. My my friend now put me in his house, and I started staying with him. When he found out what was going on, um, uh, what's his name now? What's his name now? He's getting married. We spoke today. I can't remember his name. You you spoke today. Yeah. Uh, and I can't remember this is old name. age, XL. It is. <laughs> you know, our guy that is getting married that is abroad with his babe in the UK. Ugo, Ugo, <laughs> Ugo put me in his house. Do you understand? Which like Ugo, 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 Ugo that Ugo. was writing for Ugo. culture, for culture, yes, for culture. No. Oh my god, that's it. Ugo. He lives yes. in the UK. He put me. Oh, in I his didn't house. know he had moved for free. Yeah. He put yeah. me in his house for free. So like, and then not long after that, I got a job with Boom Play and yeah. whatnot and whatnot, and I became and okay. And, you know, here you are today. There are things you will go so. It's like the way I the way I, the way I understand it is like babies. If you give birth to a baby and the baby is growing, yeah. you can't. If you one hundred percent keep the baby in a clean environment, yeah. you have fucked Their up that baby's immune system. Do not develop. They need something to fight. Human beings must go through crazy situations. The, the problem with this melody, direction of conversation melody. is, it, see, I know, what, I know. People what, will say, people mm-hmm. will always come and make it we seem are, like you are saying. I know what you I, have to be soft ahead. And yes, guess what, and guess what. Uh, guess what? It's fine. Falako, it's very fine. Okay. Because I know the era we are. We are in the era of emotional whataboutism, you know, the, you know, uh, mental health. Yeah. This, this, this. I get it. But that's why a lot of you cannot work under pressure. And the music business is pressure. It is. It is nah, pressure. It absolutely is. I feel, I feel is, like I ah, people have no idea how it is much pressure. pressure. You see, even the artists yeah. you see flossing them, they video them. It's all, you know it's the all smoke. It's, it's, it's a lot of work. Not, the you know back, the work it was a lot of work. But yeah, it's a lot of pressure. So, so the idea of... That's why we have a lot of half-baked... Ex- I tweeted one day that we have a talent problem in the music business and people were throwing shades at me and it's all good. <laughs> a lot of you people, they will give you work. I did here. They will give you work and I'm not trying to swear for you that you will fail. But what <laughs> you don't have, you cannot give. Yeah. It's just fact. 
I know what I learned from Ire and Foza, just even sitting down with them. Just sitting down with them and learning and seeing them walk. Do you understand? I was there in one situation. I was there on a particular day when I will never forget it when somebody tried to to pull a fast one on a producer they were working with. And I saw I saw them go to work. Song, they took the song down. I've bam, seen bam, that. Bam, bam, bam. I think I saw it with Lola. I saw it with Lola. I saw it with Lola. Lola. And then, and then the person Lola. had to call and make it right. Like, sometimes people have people will try you. Do you and if you don't show them that you people say you have try you. People will say, okay, this yeah. one, no, if you do anything, we go, we go, we go press them. And you have to respond. You literally have to respond. Yeah. And say, no, you can't do that. That's what you should know you are coming into. To, to. It's not just bags and all oh, that. Yeah, but if young people are cool kids. It's fine. It's, I hear you. But if people are coming to work with you, they don't have experience and they are learning, still give them some. Like, Absolutely. Please, I, I pay don't think these young should. people. I think if you're making so, money. Yes, if you're making money, should, pay them. Yes, yes, but this don't pay your intense where, thing. No, there's a uh, trauma thing there where a lot of people feel like because they ask me I people came through suffering. Yes. Uh, yeah. The people coming yeah. after they me have must come And that's not how it should be. I think that it's also an exposure problem. One thing for me is like I've always... Besides everything I've learned in the music industry, I've always obviously had like a pursued my career like outside of mm. music, right? And I've worked at great places. Yeah. I work at Google, like maybe the best place you could work at. Me listen. And Google, let's say and it, I, I just visit their <laughs> office, but when I visit, oh my God. You still work with them though. He still yeah, works with them. Work still works with them. And still like, them. you know, you guys are being chilling. exposed to that sort of environment and that sort of staff welfare, the ideology changes changes like it changes the, but yeah like the 0. 0.00 if you if you if you've experienced those sort of it yeah. doesn't make sense so for you now, to not pay even if you're yes. paying them 10 naira yes because obviously what you're, you're not earning that much but you're paying them something to not pay people at all to not care about how people feel all those sorts of things that's not the thing me i have learned from places the, I've worked the, at. The, so, the, the, but music industry people are in a in the music industry bubble i feel like most people in the music industry that work food don't do other things outside of that's it. all they've known and, and that's that system they is like have. a self-reinforcing like system politics, of like toxicity. Nigerian politicians. Yeah. Exactly. Like Nigerian politicians. If you don't, if you don't put your eyes outside and actually look at what the industries that we're aspiring to be like, tech is a tech is a good example because we evolving. saw it and we saw it become what's like in the Nigerian tech ecosystem mm -hmm. was not in 2010. What, what what startups were there? What so we saw it and we're trying to essentially do the same thing where investments are now coming in. People are, you know, companies are being sold for hundreds of millions of... That's exactly what we're trying to replicate. That's how I look at it. Yeah, we, we're trying to make our uh, industry have labels that are like unicorns. Exactly. And for us to do that, it's the whole picture. It's not just, oh, I want to make the kind of money that um, Paystack got sold for. I don't sell my... It's like how did Paystack treat their employees to get to the point where, where they, they were that great a company. Are and you doing the same thing to your own? Felt that good to I would, be able to share that kind of. I like to be melody for a minute and play devil's advocate. Oh my god! Oh, I'm always is, playing is that. What you yeah, that's our <laughs> role on this show. Oh my god! Why do you say that? <laughs> I hate you. There are people who are so poor, and because they are so poor, they are ginger to work hard and succeed. Yeah. True. Yes. Yeah. There are Can't people. Who are very rich, and because Complacence. they are very rich, they work even harder. So to they don't lose the money. Absolutely. People sometimes experiencing either of these extremes Would makes you a better staff. Your mind, yeah. Makes you a better worker. So is it is true that staff welfare aids um, results, yeah. outputs. You know, it brings it brings the best out of people. There's also a ah, when Elon Musk um, sacked a lot of people from Twitter. One guy yeah. wrote a thread. I, I think I bookmarked it. Yeah. He wrote a thread explaining a certain theory. But the theory basically is that Long. when a company becomes successful, what one person can do because we are successful and there's money now, we we'll start breaking that thing do. that one person could do into something for three people to do. Hmm. Yeah. It, no, that's normal. Yeah. To reduce that's workload. Legitimate. Yeah, and just everybody. because like you have so much more, you can hire yes, more man. people and you won't feel now, like... But if you hire in, more in, people, won't you get better output? Not necessarily. In, in normal, it's not, it's not, not necessarily. Twitter is not profitable. Twitter was not profitable and it's not profitable now. So when Elon Musk bought it and came and looked at the situation and said, y'all niggas ain't making money and we have this plenty staff. Why this? Hey. Go. Go. 
go. I remember when it happened. Yeah. People were tweeting now. Oh, Twitter will yeah. fall. We did yeah, you know, fall. The I think it's a better run. product now than it was. The app still they run. How is it a better product? People are making money. I and we have okay. creators. We have community money. Notes. That's such a great. We have I community talking notes. About thing, like, it's such community a notes? great feature. Community notes. That when you, you cap, the thing just says... When you lie, when you say something... When that's you, such when a the story cool feature. Posted, when the tweet is posted that yeah. it's not true, or it's... I've never seen it before. Paint, or doesn't paint the full story. Yeah. You see community notes on that. Say, oh, this is... The, this person, the community true. notes gives more context. Is it for everyone? No, it depends. You know, if you tweet something that can't be... No, I'm saying that. Is it like a feature that everyone has access to? It's not, it's not a feature. You're not the one doing anything. It's their team that... A if they team see in. a tweet that is misinforming, going And it's going viral. viral it's becoming they'll big. They'll, they'll correct it. They even so put community that, notes on Elon Musk's tweet. Yeah, well. So I'm, well. <laughs> so I'm saying that, can everyone see? Yes. Yeah, yeah, so I've been spending less time on Twitter. Maybe that's I've you never see seen it, it before. Everybody I didn't even know. Oh. That thing is brilliant. I've never seen it so before. So you're paying creators. You have community notes. Now he announced that you can now do video and Yeah, and you can now put full-length videos without team, without number. And they are trying to go into payments as well. But anyway, Elon Musk is, the by the ultimate way... ultimate app is what that man is trying to be. I think that in terms of what you're saying, the way companies, like successful tech companies get it right, like Google would be higher entrepreneurial and ambitious people. I agree. You have to have people that will get stuff done because that's who they are and they want to get this thing done because it's tied to their personal goals. And that's what I try to do these days. When I don't hire anyone, it's like... What are you trying to become in the industry? What are you trying to do? I want to know what your goals are and tie it to what your work the role. is. So that as you are growing, I'm growing. My company is growing. You are, we're all growing and we're all winning. And when you get to the point where it's clear that this place is too small for me, I want to go to, I want to go and work at Spotify or I want to work at Universal. I will help you facilitate that happening. So that way, I'm not, yeah, because there's a, there's a thing where when you're working and you don't see how, you're collecting your salary, you're doing your job, but you yeah. don't see how what you're doing connects to goals. what you're trying to do. Yeah. There's a cap on how much you put in because yeah. like why I go kill myself for something where I don't even understand where they take me. For, so for I me, think like, people should hire better. For me, like I, that thing you just said, now this last thing you said, it's, yeah. it's how I've always moved in my career because I... So I see my even though I'm a, I'm a exec per se. Yeah. I see myself as a creative a lot of times, and I think even that's how execs too. Depending on the you know, what role you're playing, you should see yourself. Yeah. At times. So if I'm in a place and I'm working in a place where the work we do has become um, robotic, monotonous, monotonous. Yeah. I get bored quickly and I'll resign. I'll I'll resign and be without a job, and I think I can afford to do that because. I am Excel now. Because you have money. No, I, apart from even that, like, I have people. I think the, your, your greatest strength in life is actually your networks, you have, yeah. It's people, it's connections, people you can call and say, let's get this done. Let me do this, let me do this, let me do this. Uh -huh. So I can do that. I can afford to do that because yeah. I am Excel now. But I feel like labels, now bringing that theory you just shared of the kind of people to hire yeah. into music labels. I yeah. feel like labels need Two type of two types of execs. Okay. Execs that think like product managers, and execs that are also all about like music. They they know great music because it's yeah. still a problem. We still have a problem of people putting out music that's not great. Yeah. It's a problem that exists. Yeah. You know, and it will always exists. It's just what it is. Do you understand? So how do do we how do we have people that know that okay we've created this thing? How can we push it out? How can we? market it properly like even even outside of music one of the things that has yeah. blown my mind away the most this year is Taylor Swift's tour mm. right it's, it's such a successful tour but it's not just a successful tour the thinking behind the tour mm. they made the tour family friendly so parents can come children can come like anybody can come there is much for mommy I saw uh, one actor. I can't remember the guy's name. The, uh, the 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 Magic Mike guy. I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name. I saw him with his daughter at this and at the at the Los show, and he had merch. It's me. Hi, I'm the daddy. It's me. And that's a that's a anti hero. That's lyrics for anti hero. Yeah, but yeah. they flipped it to. I'm like, this is brilliant, brilliant thinking. Yeah. Like this is so smart. Yeah. Do you understand? Like and so, so I was I was talking with some some uh, music uh, um, creatives and I was like, some of you just do what everybody does. 
like and that's the problem with the social media era we do people tend to do what everybody does yeah. because everybody's doing it yeah. nobody sits down to think and say but is it working is it actually working yeah. and then working is not in different variety if you're doing it for numbers okay you know that this thing you are doing for social media number instagram likes we're going up do you understand yeah if you are doing it to say you want to have a career a community. with longevity or yeah. you're trying to be a, a community, community is it working like what are you trying to do so first yeah. of all there are a lot of um talents that don't know what they, that don't have a plan in general I for th- themselves and then there are execs that are coming into that chaotic situation <laughs> who they themselves don't have a plan for themselves or for the talent we are just going I have, a, I have a slightly controversial okay, opinion. Go, 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 go. And that I've been sharing to people in like that I know. I think that when you're I personally, and people will probably not like this, but it is what it is. Whatever. I personally don't think that mm. people who are or let me say it this way. When someone comes to me or when I meet someone and they tell me that I'm a talent manager, I'm a talent manager or an ANR. For some reason, I just it off. just feels a certain kind of way to me. Especially like I'm not any talent manager, and I mean like emerging like someone who is like young, they, they don't know anything in the industry, and maybe they're full time yeah. working with their friend who's an artist. I just feel like these things don't give you tangible skills. I, I just have a problem maybe because I'm a corporate guy. So it's like I have what, a problem with like what the idea skill? of like spending some like years of your life not gaining tangible skills. I feel like. People should go and like you can be an A&R I or a manager. I 100% support this. And, but you should go and work. Like go and work at, as a social media <laughs> associate at 49 Street. Oh, digital marketer. You don't like the power of of experience and actually learning skills, like actual skills, is so underrated. Ro- roles and positions that you are not. There's nothing to show. Like, okay, how how do I judge that you're a good, good A and R? Like, if you say I've been A and I'm an A and R, I've been doing this for two years. I'm working with my friend. What's the metric for me? Like, there's nothing I can I can't hold on to anything. And what I find these days is with even hiring is that when you now put out like say you say oh I want to hire a content person or I want to hire a strategist or whatever, people will now send CVs and they what to be on their CV will be that they've been managing their friend, they've been A and R, but but the artist is. Has is not yet doesn't have any track any traction at all. Like the artist has like fifty listeners on Spotify. Like there's nothing you can't tell me anything. Can you like work? <laughs> can you like work with spreadsheets? Can you build decks? Can you design stuff? Like I feel like people should prioritize actual tangible skills in the beginning of their careers. Even if you are managing an artist by the side or you are A and R by the side. Doing something full time that doesn't give you any transferable skill. If, if you now do it for three years, and you now are like, "Oh my, I don't want to do this thing anymore," you enter the job market. What will you say that you've learned that is tangible, Trans- tangible and that you can show transferable skills? And I think that's a problem that I have. Like, it's something that what? really irks Dolapo, me. You have no idea. <laughs> this is probably the most brilliant thing I've heard about the music business in a long while ah, and okay. it's so important but wait so I hear the lack and I understand what he's saying right and I, I hear you and I also feel like it's not just even about it's not just about it's not only like a talent manager thing you know yeah. because I feel like when people want to talk about these things in the music industry they're always those yeah, guys that, are the low hanging fruit you know, <laughs> sorry yeah, 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 low barrier entry, like, entry very, yeah, very that's easy why, to become yeah. so, the, so the problem now is is it the fact that is it the fact that the, the job itself, the job description or the job itself has a low barrier entry point? Or is the fact that people who are in that position are not necessarily doing everything that you should be doing as an a and They can't even do everything they are supposed to do because of what Dolapo just said. Yeah. Do you understand? Melody. Because if you're an A&R, that, that, is, that, that encompasses a lot. I feel like we have probably... Let me start from like, what did, where did a and exactly. start? Where did a and so start? We always just reduce... Typically, isn't it like people... On, on I, majors. I feel like people just reduce people, people nine to five people on majors to... who their job is to find artists and develop them. Yeah. The independent A and R, the concept of the independent A and R, is, is is slightly problematic to me because, because an A and R is a lot of work. You're going to go and seek talent because there's no train, structure you're, you're doing raise. it within. So there's no, no, there's nothing that's like. But we simplify it just to sit down in the studio and listen to music. But that's not and the A and R journey is 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 is, is very interesting because they yeah. are like so they are A and R administrators. Yeah. They are the people who like 
do the business side. There yeah. are AR coordinators who yeah. are like in and the studio. And then they're like scouts. They are scouts. people that actually look for talent. And the AR yeah. journey is literally from because they are not still working documents. You really yeah. work documents too. Yeah, but if you're indie and you're managing your friend. That doesn't count. You're probably gonna have all your conversations on WhatsApp, and you guys. Do you understand? He has a point. point. Is, like I said, this thing he just said is so important because, like now, if you're an AI now, your journey is supposed to be from scouting, mm-hmm. finding talent, taking the talent, to the, to find getting the, the deal done, finding the right producer, yeah. finding the sound, crafting then a the single, branding. a demo, a project, the branding. Then you make the music. Okay, how are we marketing? Then we market. You then need decks to do all those things. When now. you yeah. when you exactly. not explore so in the ideal of what when you not experience road, problems, yes. exactly. We know that that's far from the reality. When you not also experience problems in the market, how do you react? How do you re- um, re-strategize? So it's actually a it's lot. It's a great role. And you just made me remember. Yeah. That, like, for me now, I wanted to be for the longest time when I was when I when I when I, was, when I fell in love with pop culture, right? I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to be your Sags. Sags and Pulse. And that's, that's who I wanted to be. Yeah. So I was writing articles for for different blogs. Yeah. I was writing a lot for Shewon Badejo. I don't even know. Shewon Badejo is engaged, I married. Think he's, a, he's like designer. He like does design. He has left uh, music journalism. Yeah. He has left. He went abroad with yeah. his girlfriend. They're engaged. Are, are they, have they married now? I, I don't know. Married, I know they're engaged. Yeah, yeah. I follow him Shout still. out to Shewon Badejo. Yeah. You know, like that was what Great I guy. wanted. Very important platform. Very important. Very important culture. platform. Yeah. Um, and then, but at the same time doing this, I was working with, I worked in Transition for a while. I worked with a, with a news app called Scooper. So I was actually writing news articles and whatnot then. Yeah. Then, then there was Boom Boss. Then, there, then I went, before I went to Boom Play, but also even before I went to Transition, I was in a digital marketing agency. Oh, I didn't even know I that. used to, yeah, I used to, I started out as a social media handler. Then I went from that to I worked in two social uh, two digital marketing ag- agencies. One I just did internship. And then the next one I started as a social media handler, and and then I and then I the copywriter resigned, and so and they added copyright <laughs> to my job. Yeah. And then from there I started also traveling around the country for events and entered event management from there. Still for this uh, same company, same company, one agency. And I don't think that until you just said it now that I appreciated how much yeah, of that experience I brought now. into exactly. the music business. Because and also, and also, I, I hear you when you say that. But when you were working as an intern, when you getting paid? When I was working as an intern, no, I didn't. I didn't get paid. Wow. No, I didn't get paid. I didn't get paid. Um, guys, we're going on a break. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back shortly. The I, video oops. and the audio comes out on Monday. Don't 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 miss this. Don't miss this. So yeah, this is a this is actually very valid. Like, because you, a lot of people can't, man. And sometimes I reach out to like artist managers, and this is not even for small artists. So what I'm about to say, yeah. it's not for small artists. Yeah. And I say, send me EPK. Send, and they'll just send me something on Google Doc, or like a few lines on Google Doc, and I'm like, ha. That's why when you've people not, are, you've when, not seen um, iPhone Notes app screenshots. I've seen notes. Screenshots of iPhone Notes app is the document. <laughs> yes, I've seen. I've, yeah. That's why when people are complaining <laughs> that uh, AI is coming to take job, I'm like, nah, <laughs> y'all niggas ain't even smart enough <laughs> to use AI first. You wouldn't even know what to feed the machine. <laughs> so ask. The, the, you wouldn't know what to. Do you understand? Yeah. So, uh, it, it just it just makes a lot of sense because a lot of a lot of people in the music business, a lot of young people coming in now don't have actual work skills. They can't work. And some things it. are really just basic. How to compose an email. How to compose Probably. an email. How People to pitch stuff to us. Because I, I check all the emails that come to me talk on. Yeah. People pitch music without subjects in the thing. Some people don't attach the link to the song. Some people attach the MP3 file. Like there's just some things that you can just tell that this person, just if you had just worked one year, in any decent corporate organization, <laughs> you know the amount of stuff that you would know. Yeah. It may not be brilliant at the job itself, but the things you would just pick up, how yeah, to send email, how to write a document, how to use basic Excel yeah. or um, Google Sheets, how to, like just all those lead to things. You, it, will, it will stay with you to, like forever. But that dedicating that time to just learn things that are important. I feel like they are even human skills at this point. 
Like, yeah. I don't think they are even... It's, it's not a special thing anymore to be able to use docks and sheets and all these things. I it think every be. human being Shoot. in the world that we're even going into now. If you don't know how. Like, so I, I, it's something that really pains me. Like, and I try to advise people when they come to me. I'm like, get a nine to five. Like, if it doesn't even have to be like a very, you know, shiny nine to five. Yeah. It could just be at one of these new media and like, we're always looking for people like all like platforms like us are always looking for people agents. but you guys didn't hire me ah you yeah <laughs> I also even used to you have this theory wow. Wow. I, used, I also used to have this theory but before I share that welcome guys back welcome back guys I say welcome, say, welcome guys, guys back. back I say what I say <laughs> enjoy myself welcome back guys if you missed any of the action during the break the full audio and video is out on Monday. Excel, no, and I'm not even far. joking. Yes, and I am yes. not even joking. I'm actually very serious. Yes, dear. He refused to ha- you re- re- refuse to hire me. Don't lie. You like, tried to wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Why are you doing that? She reached out to me to say that she was trash, she was like open to certain roles. But okay. you know what? I, I was just like, Melody is like, I don't know. But guess what? It's sometimes a, in life, it's a tough shot, you know? No, but sometimes in life, how I see life, how I see life and opportunities that are lost, I see it as the good things I have now, those things may have taken me off track. Yeah. Or they may have taken me somewhere. But back else. then, I actually wanted to learn. I actually wanted to understand. Why is it back then? You, it was like how, many, like, how many years ago? It's not like two years ago. It was like last year, was it? I think it was I probably remember. last year. I don't think he it was that far. Li- yeah, like, he wasn't like, listening. Like, I thought she was, tro- to be honest, I thought she was not trolling, but I thought she was listening. just, you know how I can just be like, Ah, you guys are hiring, like, I'm open. There's, really there's also the problem of, and just because of like, the way everybody carries themselves yeah. now, there's also the problem of when people come and say they want to work with you and stuff like that. You'd be like, you start wait, thinking what? big, like, hey, oh, absolutely. Can I this absolutely. Like, I, I remember applying for a job yeah. in the music business <laughs> and, so, and they said, you're too big for this role. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I think that that's, like, that's, that's, I think that's a valid conversation that should be no, had. No, I'm not. Did you understand? It's, it's, like, it's actually legitimate because... People be like, no, you... Like me, I'm just like, ah, how much like do ah, I even have that I'll pay this person? This person is like... <laughs> Wait, what but, are you but, it's, but the reality of what Excel is saying is that it's actually true. But it's the thing the because music, like with The, the industry head. makes you have to appear a certain a way. A certain way that... And when you appear that way, it's not necessarily people correlating like they can't with pay the reality of... Amazingly, amazingly, yeah, People just automatically feel like they can't even have that conversation with you. And sometimes, when people are actually trying to work, they're not trying to work for the money. Hmm. They're trying to they're trying to, to get a particular skill or, or, skill or, or understand certain things. So it's not because of you know say ah because uh, uh, why would this person want to want, want this job? It's not necessarily for the money. Maybe that person was looking for that job at that time because we're trying to achieve something or get something. So it's not always a solution. Um, well, fair. Like that's a good point for yeah, me. Yeah, even I, like I you. sometimes when like people DM me and say. Oh, we want to work with you. We want to do, 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 do. Yeah. <laughs> what I do is I observe you for a while. So sometimes I even I will on notifications on your tweets for a while. Let me be seeing your thought process. Let me just be seen. I you agree. Know. And sometimes you just see that I can't take this There's person. There's no alignment. No, yeah. apart from even that, I can't take this person a room where sensitive things are discussed and I won't see it on Twitter in a few days. Mm. Oh yeah, there's that. Yeah. And I think even like with, yeah. with the younger guys in the yeah. industry, yeah. There are very... certain trends that I see in terms of just like how they just say a lot, some things that... Yes, I mean like, obviously everybody has the freedom to say whatever they want on social media. I'm not yeah. trying to police anyone, but I'm just saying that there are some things that are slightly more sensitive and the that maybe better left unsaid. The better statement is <laughs> you have the freedom to say what you want to say, but be mindful of, of the what, consequences of, yeah, of, of what, what you say. say. Exactly. And freedom let's not comes with consequences. Yeah. And let's not also forget that most of the time people say these things because they want to prove to people that they were in those that, or that they know things or they have those on. accesses. It's like man, why? No, no, no. See, there's that. Yeah. There's that. There's even also the place of sometimes even these things that are shared. They are not shared in a sense to educate. No, no, they are not shared. The intent might even be right. Okay. Maybe they saw something wrong in that scenario, or they saw something wrong happening, and then they share it, right? Yeah. Or maybe something related to that thing is a trending topic. Yeah. And then I said, "That's how I was here." I it, it could come from a good place. Genuinely, yeah. it can. But you can have good intentions and be naive. For sure. You can have good intentions and not know that people. The best person to use as an example is Motolani. He, we we said it on terms and conditions, and I will say it again. Motolani, because of writing articles and reviewing albums, honestly, 
right? Honestly, as he believes it to be and as they are. Certain people said, this guy will never go, if he's going to walk here, we'll block it. We we saw we saw it happen, right? Not to talk of, and that's Motorani that has a lot of connections. Not to talk of somebody that is young. Mm. They are just coming in. You see something, things happen. You have good intentions, one not. You just now go and be tweeting. You know, you know, the, there's this whole uh, everybody's a warrior for justice in this era. You know, we I mean, I think that on the fl- on the flip justice. side of that, it's <laughs> it's slightly dicey because I hear you and I agree with obviously using like your better judgments yeah. in terms of what you want to say. But I think that the extreme of that is also what has caused another problem in the industry. 100%. People refusing to speak. Where 100%. People don't want to say certain negative things, things are reinforced because no one no, has but, just said Because you don't want to be cancelled and because you don't want to be the... And people keep falling into the same yeah. trap. Yeah. Because my no one's going to say... My, Nobody wants to bail the car. See, yeah, let me say this thing to everybody. You, in life, you try not to be a victim of people. If you want to go and be a freedom fighter, what, congrats, we love you. Yeah. You will not reap the benefits. You have, you have, you may have opened doors for people. You may mm-hmm. have helped start a conversation that will help people to come. And if you're comfortable with that, being with that reward, role, yeah. Congrats. I see what you you're won. saying. I see what he's saying. If you know, it's just you like are where the where the consequences. In that same if you space, know that these people you are still are, trying to yeah. work in that same space. Do business I, I in you. that same space. Okay, use your head now. Okay, I mean, you, ultimately, it boils down to, to a decision you have, have to make for yourself. Uh, you so, wear, There are certain things that I can't say. You have to pick your battles. There are certain things that I can't say because, like, there's no... I don't see the direct impact of whatever but, the person... If the person yeah. does their worst possible thing, I'm like, it just doesn't matter that much to me. But, but you probably wouldn't have been able to say it like four or five years ago. Yes. Of course. Plus, also, I don't... I have a career outside of the music industry. So uh, yeah, yeah. let's like make that clear. Like, I I'm not completely your... like, there's nobody in the music industry that can cancel me. Bro, or when I got promoted, like, even if you do, okay. I'll still have my shit. And like, when I'll I be got fine. promoted in Boomplay from Boomboss as a uh, media guy to content acquisition manager, yeah. my tweeting reduced by half. <laughs> because you're trying to get, these are the people that you are trying to ah. get their content. Do you understand? You are, like, this yeah. them every day. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Even when we started terms and conditions, first episode, I was like, on this show, I am a politician. I am for everybody. I'm going to still go and do exactly. So that's people. just that one, that's just common sense. Yeah, like you, they, you, you, job, you became a rebel again. As an yeah. adult, you have to weigh the consequent potential consequences of everything you're saying and doing. And this is across all industries. It's, it's yeah, not it's not even just music. music. Like young, yeah. I see a lot of young people. If it's tech, if it, you want to work in that industry, I be fine. I hear you. Yeah. The best route to me. It's always for you as an individual in that space to gather influence and change things. Exactly. That's my own advice on best route. Gather influence. You, you, your guys, gather influence. One of the things I have always for in every space is if you succeed, put your people on. On, yeah. Put your people on because all of you have like minds and you can say, okay, this thing no good. We go stop this one. This one, uh, we will continue this one. Whatever. Shall you become influential? Make your circle influential. And then change things. Yeah. But if you want to be a a lone wolf warrior in capi- in a capitalist setting, my brother, mm. he long go. He long. He long die. He I agree. Long. I think people should just be. Ha. I think people should just take the calm route and just think about what you want to say and do, and don't do stuff and then come and cry after and say, oh why? Yeah, but, like but some things care. are the natural consequences of other things. And once you like whatever it is that you do, there are consequences to your actions. Yeah. At the end of the and day. social media is really. That it's a dicey place because thing it's tried to that like things move too fast on that app. You say something people have seen. It's like for good and for bad as well. Of like course. there's so many people that of course. don't engage your shit but see you and like talk about you in rooms that you're not there. Of like, course. And they're like this person. See the way like I talked about you earlier today on Twitter space. Like you were not there. Yeah. But like people have heard that and they're like, hmm, who is this person? So things move like and if it was a, something bad as well, that same way it would move. Yeah. So I, I guess everybody should just be understand the amount of power you you have you have at the and time. use that to decide what the battles wise. you can fight and the battles you cannot fight there's battles that I can fight now because of where I am but like a few years ago you not been able to I was even still trying to get these people to notice me like guy I'm, this is someone that is doing something in this industry so I feel like just weigh those things when you're just starting out be very careful it's like when um, um, so because I grew up in Aba and when mm. I grew up in Aba Aba 
used to be i don't it's, it's not as much it used to be a chaotic city yeah then so there will be like riots for different reasons this would be like riots it's like crazy robberies the robberies were crazy and kidnappings were crazy that sometimes the robbers and kidnappers will send you a letter <laughs> ahead of them and day, ready this even in Ibadan, down, they used to do that at some point those kind of thing. and then there used to be also like the religious the tribal slash religious right so the, this thing will happen where like in the north especially in like joss or kaduna there will be like a um tribal or religious fight happening yeah right some sometimes it's religious like the religious fight is happening let's say muslims are killing christians unfortunately there are a lot of Igbo people in the north and they live in like southern kaduna where the christians are so when they kill they kill some of these Igbo people when the story comes back to the east right it doesn't come back as muslims killed christians yeah it comes out as house has killed evils hmm. and then in the east in about where i am they'll be like okay we are retaliating and killing houses here and i have a, a, a aunt in kaduna she still lives in kaduna to this day shout out to her so when sometimes it was so much that when it will start there she will call us and say on our own go activate in Damn. like three weeks <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> it'd be like schedule so we yeah. know in a three weeks a month on our own go stop do you understand so sometimes we'll be ahead of the curve we'll leave town we'll go go from about to either portacot or Wery and whatnot and then we also now learned that in the town to even in Aba, even if it's happening in Aba, there are certain places you should not be in Aba because those places are for lack of a better word they are hot zones like if anything goes up yeah it, it will surely happen there and it will be terrible like they were killing people then actually killing do you understand um that knowledge and i took it with me and grew up with it and when answers happened the protest i was living in jack one day and i looked at myself i say if i stay in this jack one day this protest will get to a peak i don't know what the peak is yeah but it will get to that and if i'm here this jack one day in a crazy place on a good day not to talk of when this kind, when of thing, this they kind thing they saw i left jack one day i went to my parents house in igondo Stay there quietly. I'll come out for protest. So now I won't come from now. I'm going to come to Lekito Gate for protest. Go back to that Gondo. Yes, I will never sleep. Just because I was so sure yeah. that at some point, and then it happened. It. The night of the October 20th shooting, the, the, the boys in Jacko, the street boys, whatever, they looted Circle Mall like yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, I remember. When the police came for Jacko on day, they carried every young man they were just carrying anybody that they were just carrying whether you go luto you know luto just because you did there they carried they mm. carried do you understand yeah and sometimes sometimes setting conversations on social media are like hot zones when you don't start just come out just leave twitter just drop your phone completely agree just go I and watch agree. Agree. go and hold your girlfriend don't hold your boyfriend. Don't come out. Don't be th- because sometimes the cause is even righteous. It's not even a bad, but it is foolishness to go and join when you don't have any power. They will carry you. I know people that they will say, "What about let's do something?" This, pe- this person get wild out there. This person uh, done. Even with artists, bro. Like even with artists, I've yeah. sat in rooms where maybe like brands are thinking of events and they want to. And you know me now, I'm a music guy, so I'm all about the music. I think like, ah, this person go perform, he go, this one where they done. This, this one where they go show up. This one where they some people own is crazy. This one where I greet and no greet me. Bro, like what yeah. people hold against you is so wild. It's wild. And you don't you would not know. What yep. people hold against unless they tell someone that the person so tells you, you don't know. Yep. That's why if you are trying to be a young professional, I remember that period where if you say something on woke or if you did something crazy. People were writing to your university, people yeah. were writing to your employer. Yeah. They, bro, do you understand? Like, I see Twitter sometimes as a minefield. And you have to be very careful. Yeah. Do you understand? Especially Twitter. That, that Twitter gets it's, spirit. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah it's, crazy. Spirit. it's crazy. You have to be careful. Very, very. What you say. But sometimes I tweet things and I immediately delete them. Say, ah, this thing, it, it's not wrong. I didn't say anything wrong, but I beg. I don't have the energy. I, like I don't peace. have the energy. Yeah. I like peace. Yeah. I like make I sleep well. May nobody call me tomorrow. They say this, this, this. 
Like and sometimes, most of times, you can even be saying something as cleanly as possible, and someone will intentionally misconstrue it and say that's what you're trying to say. I fit it into an agenda. You're yeah, like, I wasn't even trying to. Don't jazzy. See what they did to John Jazzy's uh, uh, episode. So where he was saying John Jazzy was talking about how he went to he, on the on podcast yeah, how he I went watch to watch the, the weekend for two hours and thirty minutes set, water. and he didn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was, I, I, he was I, I, a joke, yeah. you know. He even said my artist. He even said my artists do it, like you know. But he was so impressed by the weekend's performance and whatnot. Yeah. He just mentioned that in passing, and then <laughs> someone cut cut that it part, without yeah. context. Yeah. Also cut a video of like. Um, Whiskey fans at a at a at an event at a concert and whiskey holding his water bottle to like spray water and themselves held their own water bottle like anticipating it happily happy to spray water too and the person said Don Jazzy artists should not spray water and uh, uh, fans spray us we are your something like they're just trying to make it like, like his, Don Jazzy yeah, yeah and I'm like which kind wahala that wasn't even what he was be saying this. which kind wahala be this everything is just agenda. Guy. Everything just agenda. I think that the the what makes this thing even more difficult is that it's it's ironic that we know the toxicity of social media and all these things, all these platforms, and all the com- the dangers of over engaging and all of that. Yeah. But on the other hand, we live in a world where it now feels like, and if you are now even in the entertainment industry, it feels yeah. like you need social media, like you need it's like to. a necessary evil. So you have how to do be you? There. And also, it's not just about needing social media. You need people think that they need to be in every conversation. Yeah, and no, I mean, I'm not even talking about social media for the purpose of like activism or even like just. Journey. Even I'm even saying media. your your work, like yeah, you, it's, it almost feels like if in today in this day and age, and in a space like this, if you're not actively like, yeah, self that's what I'm saying. Like at the point of conversation, so every so there. I'm always conflicted because I'm. To be honest, like I if. It was up to me. I probably wouldn't be on social media. Same. Or I wouldn't talk... Like, I would only be talking about El Sweatshirt. Or, like... Same, actually. All day. Same. But, like, sometimes I'm just like... I have to tweet this part, this one. Even if I'm going to say, let me yeah. just do this one. Just so people I remember agree. that there's a dollar quarter. Is this is that. Yeah. I'm like... It's so tiring. Because, now, it's not because of it's who so you've tiring. become to in the industry. Because of who we've become, we yeah. also have alliances. Yeah. So when our people do stuff, we have you to You want to say something. You want to start saying... So say it's that. like... And you just feel because you also see how visibility plays such a huge role. I remember you saying something. I don't know if it was on the podcast, the former edition of the yeah. podcast. I think you said something around around like we live in a world of hyper visibility. And hyper. That's that forever. By the way, that's something that I always like. That's has stuck to my head. And it's like it's such a difficult place to be in. Very difficult because like you, it feels like if you are not tweeting today, like ah, like I did Grammy submission. I was like, ah, let me tweet it so that people will remember that I'm on the Grammy board. But sometimes it's not like these things are not super comfortable for me to do. But I'm just like, if people forget, and I'm in the business of entertainment, I run an agency where it I need clients to, to remember I that I'm relevant. You, that is one the thing industry. that I told that line. It's of, so tiring. Because even yes. as a person, like I, I struggle with self promoting. I, I don't like it. Like I don't, I'm not interested. I don't want to know. Do you understand? Yeah. But yeah. it feels like if you're not on social media saying these things, like you're not doing. I'm like, oh God. And you also it's know the trouble. way opportunities come in this industry. Yeah. It's very like, I think. Oh, I, that guy. Yeah, yeah. That guy seems really it's, smart. It's for actually me. very, yeah. it's actually very him. heavy on hyper visibility. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, the goal is balance. Dollar poor. Thank you so much. Yeah. For coming. This was really give, nice. I really, really had sweet fun. one. Yeah. They were giving us time since I was trying to spoil our. Please shut up. Shut up. But yes. Thanks so much, guys. We've come to the end of this episode. Remember, follow us on all platforms, Zero Conditions on the score. And you can send us fan mail, zeroconditionspod at gmail.com. We have some fan mail that we have not read. Because somebody saw me in real life and blocked me. I was like, I sent mail, you know, read them. (laughs) We will read it. Don't worry. We will go go read it. Maybe next week. Catch you next week. Full video and audio is out on Monday. See ya. Love ya. Bye.